Hi there, Lloyd Mesita. It's me and you from LloydMesita.com. Who's Lloyd Mesita and think personal branding? All right, uh, a couple of updates uh, for you that I have. Uh, um, first is uh, the main controversial ones which are in the headlines. Then later on, I'll also speak to you about um, one of my previous videos where I spoke of the Comoros passport and Emirati locals. I will also share with you uh, plenty of readers-based messages that have been sent to me. So let's quickly jump in. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, remember this, uh, different topics, the timestamp is put down below. And if you want to speed up the video, YouTube has an option. Please use that. So let's quickly move in. Uh, the first one is, which everyone has been sending me, this uh, woman has been jailed in Dubai for calling her, um, you know, calling another woman a horse. Um, so this lady, her name is Lale Shar Sharvesh. Okay, she's a British uh, passport holder, 55 years. She is jailed in Dubai uh, because three years ago, uh, in the year 2016, she called her ex-husband an idiot and his new wife a horse. So it happened, uh, what actually happened was she was married to this guy for 18 years. He decided uh, enough of her, I'll get married to this new woman. So she ma he married this new woman and um, obviously because, you know, this, this poor little uh, Lale was hurt and upset being dumped. So she called uh, the 42-year-old uh, new wife, um, it's in Tunisian born, Sama al-Hamadi, a horse. And uh, she called her husband an idiot. And the second post, she put two posts. The second post that she put was, I hope... You go under under the ground, you idiot. Damn you, you left me for this horse. You married a horse, you idiot. That's all she did while she was in the UK. She thought nothing about the comments and she went ahead with her life. She was not aware of the fact that Sama al-Hamadi, um, this woman, she complained to the Dubai authorities because this hurt her feelings. Oh, someone called me a horse. Oh, someone called my husband an idiot. She was, boo-hoo-hoo, someone called me a horsey, someone called me a horsey. So she went to the Dubai-based authorities and uh, the Dubai authorities, because they are jobless, they don't have anything else to do. Oh my God, this is such a serious crime. We need to seek justice. So what they did is they made a police case. This poor lady, um, Lali Sharvesh, she you know, husband, ex-husband died. So to pay respects, she flew down to Dubai, Dubai, the great Dubai, UAE, to pay her final respects. But instead, at the airport, she and her daughter were uh, arrested by the police. They were kept in the, you know, in the airport, there is a police station lockup area. They were kept there for 12 hours, not offered any food and water. They were made to sign papers which were in Arabic, no translation was offered. And later on, she found out that uh, as per this translation, she had uh, signed a document stating that she she didn't call her a horse. She called her a bitch. Okay. And uh, because of the great laws of UAE, the great laws that if you, you know, in UAE, even if you show a finger, <gasps> oh, it's a big crime. If you... Um, uh, say anything, anything uh, against her, like, fuck off. It's a big crime. Prostitution is okay. UAE uh, violating human uh, rights, that is okay. Uh, UAE, the atrocities in Yemen, killing and raping children, that is okay. But, uh, you know, calling someone a horse, oh my God, that's fucking serious. That's so fucking serious. You know, that's, of course, man, come on. Yeah, you need to use... Uh, UAE laws, you know, these are the great laws of the country. So because of these great laws, this poor lady, she has lost her job back home. She has loans to pay. She is currently in 5,000 pounds worth of debt and she's forced to stay in Dubai. Um, she'll be fined as per the UAE great laws. She'll be fined two years for two years and 50,000 UK pounds or 250,000 dirhams or 65,000 US dollars. Funny thing is, she flew to Dubai to pay respects to her ex-husband who died of heart attack and this is what she got in return. You know, this is the problem. When you have fuck all laws and you have fuck all personalities doing fuck all things, you can get away with a lot of shit. That is why 
That is why me. You know, people say, oh, law, you fucking hate Dubai. Oh, your butt hurt. Oh, you shouldn't spit in the hand that fed you. When you have such retarded fucking laws, what, what do you want me to say? Like, wow, this is such a great law. You call anyone a horse, you will be fined 65,000 US dollars. You'll be jailed for two years for calling someone a horse. It's like you hurt anyone's fucking feelings. It's bad. Prostitution is okay. Human rights abuse is okay. Raping children is okay in Yemen. Uh, taking advantage of these poor, uh, helpless human beings in all these different countries. That's okay. That's okay. You know, that's okay. But horse, my God, horse. How can you call someone a horse? Yeehaw. You know, so you see, you, you tell me, you tell me whether I'm right or wrong. You tell me whether this makes sense or not. Agreed. No country is perfect. Agreed. There are a lot of fucking uh, stupid laws in different countries. Uh, but I'll tell you what is going to happen. Because she has a UK passport, Gora passport. Finally, they'll make a big noise. And finally, the UAE ministry or something will say, uh, you know, we have decided to release her. You know, and uh, some representative will say, they're improving on the laws. But, you know, cybersecurity is important. But if she was a Bangladeshi or she was a Pakistani or she was an Indian, or any from the African countries, poor countries, you know, they wouldn't give a flying fuck about it. But yes, now because it's a Gora passport, Gora, white skin, white, Western, superior, superior, you know, they will take some action. So just watch what happens. This drama will unfold. Yes, they will make a big noise and uh, UAE has to show year of tolerance after all, year of tolerance. See what tolerance they have. You call someone a horse. Oh, they're my tolerance. No, 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 no. Prostitution is okay. Raping children in Yemen. That's okay. We have to tolerate all that. But calling someone horse, goda. Don't call horse, donkey, sheep, goat. No, no. Don't call idiot. Don't show small finger, big finger. No. All right. Let me just tell you one of the biggest drawback of this this law in itself okay and this is not from someone else sharing with me in their story this is me telling you my actual experience now you know i i stayed in dubai for 40 years so most of you know this now during the uh, last four or five years that i was in dubai i used to coach other students now one of my students was a uh, emirati was a uh, actual emirati and I was coaching this Emirati student. There are actually a couple of them, four or five of them. So they used to come to me, one of them, and they were pretty good. My relationship with them was absolutely good. They were um, well-paying clients. Now, it so happened that during the good days that I was with uh, these clients, Emirati women, um, I used to take photographs of me and my clients. And among them, I also took photographs of me with these Emirati local women. So I used to put it on Facebook and I, I had taken the explicit permission before putting it up. So everything was good. Everything was fine. Um, however, after a, I think a period of two years or so, one of these students um, one day had a disagreement with me and, you know, me being the coach. For me, I don't care if you're local or whatever. A coach and coachee or teacher and student relationship is um, if you're wrong, I tell you you're wrong. So this student did not like the fact that I told her that she was wrong and uh, may, her ego got hurt. And I didn't bother because obviously, uh, you know, I'm not here to kiss your ass. Before I knew it, I, I would say, you know, I'm not going too much into details, but before I knew it, Within a few days, I got a call from Dubai police and they said, um, hi, is this lawyer? I said, yes, this is lawyer. He says, we just want you to know that there is a complaint that is against you put by this lady and uh, you need to come to the police station. So I kind of knew what the problem was. Uh, ego had got hurt and, you know, obviously. So I had taken printouts of all the correspondences that we had just to show that, that I was in the, you know, good books. So when I went there, I went to the Dubai police headquarters. I was, I'll tell you honestly, I was shit scared. I went there and uh, the inspector, 
he called me and he was a very educated, very nice, very polite person. Okay. I showed him all the correspondence, everything. I said, see, listen, I, I know what the complaint is most probably that she's angry and upset that we had a disagreement. These are the correspondence. He told me, teacher, he told me, teacher, you're someone who I respect. You're a teacher. I have nothing against you. You're a good person. You're a good man. But this is what he said. Huh? This is what he said. You need to understand this is UAE. UAE supports Emiratis. And as for the new law by Sheikh Mohammed, if any Emirati complains against an expatriate, especially if it's a woman who's complaining against a man, you are guilty until proven innocent. And even if you are innocent, even if you produce everything else, you can still be marked guilty. And I was like, you know, just, I'll tell you, I, I was just, I didn't know what to say. I just was quiet. And he's, I, I told him, what do I do? You know, I, I mean, I don't want any problems. Please help me. He said, there's only one solution. He's saying, if you cannot, if you cannot uh, get her to s close this case, then you will be taken, you'll be put in jail for indefinite period of time. After that, you will have to book a lawyer, court, and your passport will be taken. And this will continue for years and years until she withdraws the complaint. The second option is, she says, okay, case is closed. No need. So I said, please just call her. I'll apologize to her. I'll say whatever you want me to say. So he said, okay, fine. So he called me to another room. There were two or three witnesses there, uh, people. And he put her on speaker. And as soon as she came online, obviously on the speaker phone conference. So she said, uh, I, I don't know. Hi, you know, I politely said, hi, whatever. I just want to say, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I'm at the police station, please. I have a family. I have a life. You know, I don't want it to be destroyed. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I just want to apologize. And you don't believe she claimed. She said that you try to spoil my name. You try to ruin my name. You try to ruin it on social media. You put my photographs without my permission, which was rubbish because I had put her photographs with her permission. And this was done like two years ago. And she was claiming that, you know, I, I, I didn't take her permission and I couldn't prove anything. And she was saying, Lord, you try to ruin my name. You try to ruin my reputation. You try to benefit from me. I just said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please. Sir. Then finally she said, okay, uh, being a Muslim, you know, Quran said, Prophet Muhammad said, okay, Islam said, whatever. Okay, I forgive you in the name of Allah, in the name of the saying, okay, we Muslims are good people. I forgive you. Okay, yalla. So then they spoke in Arabic. He said, oh, yalla, no problem. Okay. This. And she forgave me. And the police inspector said, teacher, sir, you know, uh, you can go. There's no problem. I'll tell you, I was, my heart was pounding out of my chest. I was so glad it was over and I went away. I was glad that the inspector, the local Emirati policeman was nice and kind. I'm glad that she withdrew the complaint. But this really shook my foundation, made me realize that this law, the social media law, this, this fucking law that they have, how any Emirati can take advantage how any Arab can take advantage and they can fuck you over, man. It's like uh, you can't do any fucking jack shit because it's not a fucking country. So this was my experience for this fucking law. And that is why I fucking hate this fucking law. So I thought you should know this. You should know this before anything else. So you tell me, you tell me, is this law, does it make any fucking sense? Or is this fucking retarded? Put your thoughts in the comment below. There are so many other things for which they need to focus on. Rape, atrocities, human rights abuse, you know, unpaid salaries, unjust, you know, drugs, crime, so many other things. But no, they'll focus on, he called, he called her a horse. Oh, she should be jailed. Oh, he has hurt our religious sentiments. Oh, she should be jailed. For me personally, this is fuck all. So I, I would like to know your views. You tell me your views. Seriously, because I feel this really needs to be addressed. Next one is College Times reported that uh, parents have cried foul over Indian high schools, overpriced books. I really, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised at this. I'm not surprised. On one side, you have this school, Indian high school, that I, you know, explicitly 
it charges double. It makes sure that you can't buy books anywhere else. It's, you know, it has its reputation. It's like, its reputation has gone to the dogs. Yet, these Indian parents still send their children to the school. And then they still complain about it. You know, here's my question to you. If you know this place is a shithole, why the fuck are you sending your children there? And if you are sending your children there, why the fuck are you complaining? It doesn't make sense. It's like a woman is a fucking whore, but and you still get into a relationship with her, and then you cry and complain, oh, she's sleeping around. Why she's doing this? Why she doesn't love me? Yeah, you know, this Indian mentality. I want the cheapest test and the bestest test for my this thing. Why the fuck? I, in fact, I don't see any other parent of any other school complaining. Only Indian high school. My, you know, yes, on one hand, Indian high school. See, the fact of the matter, Indian high school has clearly, you know, proved that it is out there to make money. Suck your blood or whatever. It's a profit making institution. They are clearly, you know, they've stated it, even though they don't admit it. Everyone knows about it. Then why the fuck are you sending your children to this school? And after sending your children to this why are you crying? Ah, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Every fucking year, the same fucking thing. It's simple. If a female is a fucking whore, don't go to her. Don't put your fucking nose in her vagina and then complain. Oh, oh there is virus, fungus, dirt eh, because someone else put their fucking semen there. Don't fucking go there. Just get the fuck out and go find another fucking school. In this, I don't blame the school. The school is a profit making center. They are out there to make money. It's these stingy parents. Stingy parents who, oh, you're so expensive, but let me still send my children there. Let me. Oh, next year, oh, why you did it again? Oh. Every fucking year they keep crying. You know, this Indian mentality never fucking changes. They want the cheapest, they want the best, they're fucking cheap. That's how they are, they'll forever be cheap. So I'm personally fed up and tired of this shit. Uh, I, what I feel, parents, if you really want your children to get cheap books and cheap everything, like, you know, some of them are even photocopying, send your children to some fucking village, man. Then, you know, you just have to pay maybe five drums for the whole fucking year. Or change the fucking school. Why are you moaning and groaning and complaining? Take some fucking action. Stop bitching about it. That's my view. You know, it's very simple. You go to a place and you still fucking complain. What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't fucking go there. The next one is Sheikh Mohammed sells his house, uh, sells most man house in Australia for 550, uh, half a million. That is loss. Okay. Half a million dollars loss. This was a big news. Well, I, I guess the reason why he has sold his house at a loss is because the property market is crashing even further. And uh, this spells a problem for almost everyone. So I don't see what's a big deal. Well, end of the day, he needs to also be smart as a businessman. Uh, I would recommend you to read this article that has come out with uh, from Gulf News of identity theft especially if you're in the UAE, uh, please be careful where you've kept your money, in which bank. Please be careful of your SIM card. Please be careful of your national ID, your passport, because uh, now frauds and scams are increasing in the Middle East. And keep this in mind that if you were to lose even millions or everything, if you were to lose all your money, uh, they are not going to make it easy for you to recover your funds. So I would just say that be very careful I'll put the link below in the description box. Read it because I think it'll help you a lot. The next one is in Dubai, they uh, discovered 1 billion worth of fake currencies. Uh, so 41 cases of forgery, 63 suspects were arrested in 2018. And uh, now it is 499 such cases out of which 471 have been uh, arrested or something like that. So... A lot of shit going on in Dubai and see it's it's very obvious because now people are trying to survive when the economy which was when it was booming everyone was making money easily now when times are tough well you have increased number of frauds and scams so they're trying to squeeze out everyone and run away keep this in mind if someone tells you easy money stay the fuck out so run away far as possible 
The next one is, uh, I got this uh, lengthy email from uh, a gentleman, but I'll just get to the point. It says, hi, Loy, um, came across your YouTube channel, courtesy Manoj Nathani's blog, voiceofthemarkets.blogspot.com. Having lived in UAE for most of my life, your channel and Manoj's blog attract uh, me. Uh, I have watched most of your recent videos. In fact, we have a common friend who's a UAE national. I met up with him and he mentioned your channel. He said he knows you very well and has met you before. In one of your videos, you mentioned about Emiratis having Comoros nationality. These are people with Comoros passports who are not UAE nationals. These people are without any nationality. They are known as Bidun or without. As you are aware, they are mainly Indian, Iranis, Pakistanis, Baluchis, Iraqis, Syrians living in UAE since 40 to 50 years. They are undocumented people who have been living in UAE. They speak fluent Arabic. Uh, however, even though they have been two or three generations here, they were not given any passport. So finally, um, you know, they were given Comoros passport. Each passport cost the government $10,000. Uh, sadly, sadly, uh, what has happened is having this passport doesn't have any benefit. So there are two uh, links that he has shared, which I think you must read because it just gives you in a nutshell who are Bidunians and uh, what is this Comoros passport. If I were to say it in a nutshell, it is these people like uh, he has put Indians, Pakistanis, Baluchis, Syrians, uh, Iranis, Iraqis who came down, came down to UAE many, many years ago when UAE had just uh, formed itself. And um, many of them just destroyed their passport because they assumed by not having any passport, they would be issued passports in uh, UAE. However, they remained there without any uh, passport. And, um, you know, it's, it's like now they need to survive. Their next generation, their children, they're wondering, what do they do? Um, I think the major problem that occurs is, on one hand, you know, the locals get free education, healthcare, housing allowance, and state benefits. So this is for Emiratis. But these people from Comoros, they are not given any of these, even though they have stayed in UAE for all these years, even though they uh, you know, know Arabic, even though they know the culture, because they're considered, okay, you're like, you know, we don't know you. So finding employment is also difficult, getting birth certificates, renewing your driver's license, even getting a job is difficult. So finally, it seems uh, Sheikh Khalifa, uh, came out with this resolution where he said, fine, in 2008, let's solve this problem once and for all. They spent almost 200 million and gave all these guys, these people who didn't have any uh, passports, they gave them Comoros passports, which is African. But now the problem is they can't stay in Comoros. They don't have residency there. Neither they can do anything in UAE. So now this is becoming a major crisis. So there are two articles. I'll uh, put the links below. Check it out. And, um, you know, I don't want to keep dwelling on this. So this is just to let you know what is the situation of uh, UAE where Emiratis are concerned and people from Comoros uh, or rather Bedunians are concerned. Uh, it's it's sad. It's sad. I, I think uh, UAE should definitely, um, you know, treat them like Emiratis. I don't see what is the fucking problem in making them part of the country. I, I just feel that um, one of the primary, this is my assumption, one of the reasons why they don't want to give them Emirati passports is because they are afraid of, um, you know, people having a different voice and uh, citizens supporting someone else other than the monarchy which is there. So this is just my opinion. I can be wrong. The next one is from Gulf News. Uh, a car plate, you know, a car plate that you put for a car, it fetches... 4 million dirhams or 1.9 million dirhams. Uh, total revenue that they managed to get is 23 million uh, dirhams. 23 million. Okay. You know, sometimes I scratch my head and I ask myself, what the fuck are you going to do with a number? You drive a car. Okay. If you're driving a Rolls Royce, fine. It's a Rolls Royce. A Bugatti, Lamborghini, fine. That's a car. It has function. You can do something with it. What the fuck do you do with a number plate? What do you do? Can you drive on it? Can you cut vegetables with it? Can you paint the house? What the fuck do you do? Okay, expensive car, you can say drive, prestige value. The thing is, 
these people have this massive insecurity where they need to show that they are special. How do they show they are special is by flaunting these numbers. And when you show this number, oh, he's a VIP, he's a big guy. Personally, I don't see the money that is being spent. I don't think this is money that is earned through hard work. I don't see this money as money that you toiled and you earned over the years. Because if I earned 4 million over many years, I'm not going to buy a fucking number plate and put it on my head and walk around with it. What the fuck do you do with a number plate? In fact, if you're on the height of stupidity, a number plate which was number one, was purchased by a 25-year-old businessman, Saeed Abdul Ghafoor Kuri from Abu Dhabi, for $52.2 million. $52.2 million. Sorry, $52.2 million dirhams, which is $14.2 million. I don't know what to think about it. You tell me. If this money was through hard work, would you buy a fucking number plate? And the second question is, what the fuck do you do with a number plate, man? What do you do with a number plate? Just put it on your fucking car and do what? I can never understand the Arab mentality. You know, they, they have so much fucking insecurity that they have to buy with money and show. Number plate, number plate. I'm big, huh? big. Okay, whatever. Next one is a reader who sent me this um, WhatsApp message. He said, Loy, I hope you are aware of the law of the central bank. After five years, a bank cannot claim its unpaid amount for customers. So a couple of banks, specifically ADCB, has a big junk of old data where they've routed this to collection agencies say, uh, and collection agencies get 20% commission from recovery amounts. So, for example, if my debt is uh, unpaid debt is 10000 Agency will call me and force me to settle. So I pay 5,000. They'll give me a verbal assurance. Customers will pay 5,000 and the rest of the amount will be pending. They'll assume that they don't have to pay this, but the bank will not stop interest until they pay that remaining 5,000. And for the remaining 5,000, there's an interest which is very high, which is 1,500 uh, each month. Imagine for 5,000, 1,500. That's more than, I would say 33 or 35%. Okay, each month, each month, 35% huh? on the amount. So this will keep continuing until the person pays everything. So this is how the banks make money. I just look at it as the banks are playing with the greed of these people. These people are stupid. They think it's free money. And uh, if you take money, you need to fucking pay it. Okay, that's the bottom line. You take someone's money, you don't fucking pay it. And then you complain about it. You're, f you're fucking stupid. Okay, next one is, I got this from one of the readers. He says, boy, I just landed from uh, Heathrow at T3, okay, Terminal 3. Uh, he's saying, last year when I came, this place was crowded. This time when I came, it was absolutely empty. And he has shown me a couple of photographs here. This place is absolutely empty. So this is what he says, T3, uh, because he being a constant traveler to Dubai, he's telling me that, uh, all this hype that UAE has about these big airports and 800 million, you know, 800 million passengers or whatever. Saying, where are the fucking passengers? Next one. Uh, these are a couple of messages that readers have sent me. One is Sri Kant. He says, what are things you think deeply in recent times? My response to him was 3M, making more money. Next one is Afak Somoro. He says, if Indians drink cow piss, do they eat cow dung as well? Dunk, not dunk, dung. Okay, just asking out of curiosity. So Mohammed Imran says, no, they use it as fuel and fertilizer, which I thought was a good response. Anyway, Afak, it seems, is a dedicated uh, viewer. So I have no hate against him. Mohammed Imran, good thinking on your feet. Nice response. Next one, Dr. Zishan Sheikh says, Law, you baboon. Yes, sweetheart. You have shit of references and on top of tact, top of tact, <laughs> okay. It's your tattooed brain which is damaged. Never seen a psycho like you having depression and schizophrenic, schizophrenic. Dr. Zishan Sheikh, 
thank you so much sweetheart I guess you have your periods which is why you have nowhere else to voice your mood swings okay next one mr. merchant Usman look at his amazing photograph he looks like a superstar Bangladeshi superstar anyway he says if you're not covered then come Dubai bill be live me you bastard in Dubai jail for life Dubai fuck you ugly shaitan from Oslo Norway English very good mr. merchant Usman I think you speak English from asshole better learn English okay English next one oh dr. Zishan once again Loy Macedo, you are a poor beggar and you need a psychiatrist. Thank you, Zishan, sweetheart. Your photograph looks amazing. Next one is Sergeant Basha, who says, Happy to see 25,000 subscribers on this channel. I was there when this channel had around 500 to 600 subscribers. Then I was having a confusion. What this channel is going to do with less than 1K subscribers? This is called persistence, perseverance, and sticking to your values. This is how success looks through time. I wish you all the best, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Sergeant. Next one is Abhimanyu Moitra. Every day in Facebook, you will see ads of different housing projects and they offer about various discount. Even their prices are hyped. One as real price of real estate is too low compared to the offering price. They're making full of customers. They are saying like phase one and two almost booked. Only one to two villas, all bullshit claim. My friend told me almost all property projects are empty, which I totally agree, which is actually happening in UAE. So that is why I would not buy or believe any of the hype or ads that they put in UAE. Okay, because there's no way to verify if what they're saying is true or not. Next one is Insane Clip says, Fuck you, Satanist. Thank you very much, sweetheart. Next one is Mr. Abdul Hamid who says, Hi, Mr. Loyal Muslims. Prayer takes only 20 minutes maximum time, not half an hour, this local or anyone. They are misusing the working hours, which is very true. Maybe they take breaks or etc. That's a reason other religions giving the whole blame on Islam religion because of someone. But not Like I say, there's no smoke without fire. Okay, but please don't talk if you don't about religion. Followers are all not all the same. I am also go for prayer on working hours, but it includes in my break except one prayer takes extra 15 minutes so some stupid people don't know about religion blaming entire Islam well you can't blame it it's a reality that happens and uh, Riyaz Patan says Abdul Hamid exactly the Salah should be part of the personal time lunch or tea break but most Muslims abuse the freedom of making Salah out of their lunch and tea break the same Arab guy who claims to make Salah on time don't understand or follow the first rule of standing in Jama gathering for Salah is equality. Well, I like I said, I don't have anything against Islam. I'm just telling you the reality of what Arab locals, not all, but most of them do. Okay, the next one. This is Viper GDS Ferrari 4A488. So what he says is, Everybody's trying to miss, miss the reputation of Dubai by making assumptions just like you. But Dubai is standing. Why is it standing? Okay. Because you and so many others have a target to hate on and the reason is hidden. Although your reason uh, obviously clear that you lived in Dubai and you did something really stupid and they kicked you out. And I don't know if someone provided you with proper finance so you could continue, but it's, it is possibilities. Well, whatever people want to assume. Okay, next one is Mr. H. Loy, have you heard anything of the deals on wheels in Dubai? The famous car company was mysteriously shut down by the courts. Read the negative Google reviews and strange review by former employee on Glassdoor. They were heavily promoted by YouTube, like uh, YouTubers like Mo Vlog, Mo Money, and others. Sounds like a TMZ story. I have no idea, man. So, if any of you know, please let me know. Next one is Raj, who says. Avoc, which is a website like soup.com, is definitely fake. As also a victim, so please be careful if you buy anything online. Last, if not the least, I thought I'd share this photograph with you. This is a photograph taken from India, where these gentlemen, who are very generous, have donated a banana 
to this poor man and uh, they wanted to show their generosity on uh, social media so they all you know took a photograph to show we are donating two bananas to this poor man how generous these indians are really proud moment for a uh, indians jay Hind, that's what i'd say so these are some of the updates that i received uh, not many like i said let me know what are your thoughts especially with regards to that lady who has been jailed in Dubai. Do you think these rules are good? Do you think these rules are fair? Or do you think they're just fuck all? And especially with regards to that Indian high school, are you fed up and tired of uh, you know parents complaining? Do you think something should be done? I'd love to know your views. So this is all from LineMessina.com. Who's LineMessina? Thank you for some You want to support the channel? Like, subscribe, and uh, put your comments. Good, bad, ugly. Always keep them. I never delete them. So this is me signing off for now. Take care.